Hey all, Jeff the Farming Artist here. And the reason for today's video is because Jess at Roots and Refuge Farm posted a wonderful video a couple of days ago. Uh, I think she called it uh, Preparing for Abundance, and which is what we're in the process of doing right now in the winter, um, the way that most gardeners, I think, do, or uh, farmers. And in her video, she basically puts out a challenge to those of us who are also farmers and gardeners and creators to post before and after pictures. Or um, what I'm doing today is, this is what the farm looks like today. This is what our little homestead looks like today at the 30th of January, 2020. And I'll include some pictures of what it was looking like near harvest time last year when everything was all beautiful and green and filled with fruits. Now since I'm standing right here right now and the studio is right behind me, one of the features of the studio is right here that is a peach tree and she may be kind of small but she's mighty and this is what she looks like now and this is what she looked like when it was ready to harvest. Beautiful, eh? And we're still eating on those peaches, let me tell you. So even though this is not necessarily food, there is some food in here, this helps us to get food because what I've got on either side of this bridge, what we love to call the bridge across forever, um, is all, everything they planted in there is a perennial for pollinators. And you can see what it looks like right now and this is what it looked like in its bounty. So from here, let's take a quick little jaunt over to uh, the hop farms on the end of the property. We actually have hops surrounding us, but we're gonna go down here to the southeast end. Okay, so this is uh, where our hops are. That's been our most prolific hop field. Um, we had a great year last year, had a ton of, of moisture in the winter and in the spring. This year hasn't been quite as abundant with moisture, but as you can see, there's still plenty of snow up on the mountains and we still have two good snow months left to go. Um, but last year there was a ton more this time of year. So here are the southeast hop fields and this is where the comet hops grew last year. And you can see I still need to clean them off the, uh, off of the mining. And we've got the sisal that's running up and down there. And we'll just cut that off, chop it up and throw it in compost because it will compost. And we had five good healthy uh, two-year plants last year that gave us a ton of hops and enough to brew a, a small batch at um, Wits End Brewery up in Denver. And then this coming year, we because we've planted so many more and we should have equal abundance if not more, um, surely enough for a full batch. And we'll see who's going to buy those hops and turn it into a big batch of Comet beer. And then over here, you see those are the two Kirin plants that survived for last year. They did grow. Um, I just kind of left them kind of wild to let them do what they needed to. And then we've got several more behind them. It's Kirin 2 is the name of that hop. Then over here in front of that big apricot tree, that area is all where we have a bunch of English hops. They are all were just planted last year. They did okay um, for first year plants considering they had some struggles, but we'll see. I think they're gonna do fine this year and hopefully we've got enough because I have somebody who wants them. And now we're gonna go over and we'll take a look even though this really doesn't have anything to do with abundance of the summer, um, we'll just take you and give you a quick view of what's going on with the grow dome. So now here in the grow dome, 
You can see we're still doing a lot of work in here. We've had several delays for a number of different reasons. I finally now believe I've got everything I need in order to finish this thing up. I just need the time to finish it. You can see we've got the plumbing set up. That was one of the biggest challenges of figuring out how to make that filter work and get the plumbing all right. And I think we've got that going on. So soon the fish tank there will be filled with fish. Uh, that experiment will still have a long way to go, but we'll have raft systems in here and Dutch buckets. And we're looking forward to having fruitful time starting in the, the uh, summer and going on from there. And from here, we're going to go back. Oh, this oval here, while I'm here, that is something that we're going to do a lot of experimenting with planting in there. But uh, we've got the plants all picked out. We just need to figure out whether we're going to raise that or what we're going to do with it. If you've got any suggestions, uh, leave a comment below. By the way, I do have to make drainage for that because when we get hard rains, that fills up because of how much clay there is underneath it. So we're going to be having to put a drain through here. So there'll be gravel in the bottom and we'll just see where we go. As you can see, we still have plenty of ice and snow, so I'm going to be careful coming around here. <clears throat> coming into whoops, our hugel culture area. And there was the last two years that was tomatoes. This year we're going to turn it into peppers. Uh, just didn't think that the tomatoes did as well as they could have. And I just feel more comfortable with switching it over. And then behind it, that was originally Blueberry Hill. Um, kind of didn't have a ton going on with it last year. All the blueberry plants didn't make it. Uh, two of the three or four raspberries I had did. We will keep those there. Right now we've got some cardoon and some artichoke planted in there. And we're going to um, here in uh, about a month or two we're going to start planting some other things in there. I think basically what we're looking at is considering onions and garlic in that. And then over here, and you have to excuse the mess, but this is going to be the location of our new hugel culture right in there, right in front of that wheelbarrow and uh, that pile of clay. And that's going to be all for tomatoes. Hopefully a whole lot of uh, yellow and orange tomatoes. So we'll come over here. And as you can see, the grass is not that green and it will get greener. We unfortunately lost a couple of trees this year, which were planted right here and, uh, and here. And those were pignon. It was really sad to see them go because um, since we've owned this place, we haven't had a good pignon year. They only happen about every seven years. Um, and uh, it's really too bad that we lost them, but that happens. And over here, these were all hops last year. Um, this area is some English hops. They did okay, not great. And then as we come around here, more hops were there. And now we're into the, these are elderberry. Well, we've got hops right here. You can see those are saws hops. They did really good. I was a lot, I was very surprised. Now you might also see all these trees here on the border. Those are all Siberian elms or as they're called around here. Uh, Chinese elms and they are a pest and so we're gonna have to trim some of them out but you can see we had a, quite an abundance here of our berries those are elderberries and uh, what else and there's an aronia bush in there I don't really know what an aronia berry is supposed to taste like but I'll find out all right so now we'll go back here to the raised beds and take a look at them.
Hey Val. <clears throat> so you can see we've got some fixing to do of the walk and such. Um, I think some of this got pulled up by weather and some of it by gophers. And there are our beds. Now you can see <clears throat> we got a little bit of work we've got to do on them just to get prepared for the year. I've got my mulch in there. I've been throwing uh, my worm juice in there. It's a combination of worm tea I make and the worm tea that they make. Um, and there you can see now, this is what it looks like now. And this is what it looked like back just a handful of months ago. Now over here is the front yard and we kind of use this as additional parking in the past. Um, we are changing all that. We are going to take that gravel and going to do uh, it's a little bit more decorative walk stuff here. But for the most part, this whole area we are going to turn into a no-till or back to Eden or food forest kind of an idea. We're looking at doing a number of different things along those lines. Of course, everybody's got slightly different ideas. Um, well, not everybody, but a lot of people. And we're gonna take what we feel is the best that we can adapt he for here. I think this cherry tree is gonna survive. I know that cherry tree is gonna survive. That's a mold error and it looked like it was all right but that cherry tree and now we guess we pulled the other one i don't know if that one's going to survive um oh here yeah it's right there that one's definitely not going to survive just having trouble with growing cherries up here so why not turn it into food that i know i can grow here so jess there you go take it for what it's worth um, this is the way that things look now in January of 2020. And of course, I showed you several pictures of what things look like in their bounty. So I am preparing for the bounty and I hope all of you are preparing for the, your bounty as well. Please give us the thumbs up, like us, um, subscribe and give me any comments about what you see below or any ideas that you might have on what you'd like to see us do here, or even any ideas on how we could improve things, especially with what we're gonna be doing over there to the front yard. Um, I've never done a no-till before. I've read a ton about it. Uh, definitely seen more than my share of videos, if anybody can. <laughs> and we'll just go from there. Remember, be kind to yourselves. Be kind to one another. One Tanaba, peace.